we pack all of our snowboarding, all of our skis. We put like six guys in here and we just go up for the mountain. We snowboard for the day. We come back here, we chef up some burgers for lunch and then go back out, shred the gnar. Hello, this is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel here in Brick Township, New Jersey. And I met up with Troy and Troy has a really cool homemade DIY schoolie camper conversion, but it's also a toy hauler. And he's gonna give us a tour today inside and out. Hello, Troy, and welcome to New Jersey Outdoor Adventures. Hey, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Troy and uh, this is my 2001 Thomas Freightliner school bus. Um, it has a cat diesel 3126 engine with an automatic Allison transmission. Um, it's a pretty cool project I did and uh, I used it to haul my Jeep Wrangler. Um, I love going off-roading so I needed a trailer and this is the best idea I came up with. I'll give you guys a tour of the inside. All right, come on in. All right, so as you see, used to have school bus seats and uh, we took them all out and we converted it into a nice little weekend getaway. Um, I currently do not live in it, but uh, I do use it pretty frequently on the weekends. Um, up here we have the dash, the driver's seat. It's pretty comfortable, you know, you got the little rest on the side. Um, it does have cruise control, so a lot of people ask um, how fast it goes. It uh, cruise control 65 miles per hour. Um, no issues with the Jeep on the back, it actually drives amazing. When I am driving, I have a backup camera. It's always on, just in case you know I can see who's behind me, see who's riding my butt. So I use my beautiful JBL speaker, um, get the you know the music kicking, and then um, up here, you know, it's just a little junk cabinet. You know, it's got you know pretty much storage. You know, sorry about it, it's you know, too organized. Um, over here, so the bus does have air brakes and like an air door and all that. Um, so you know, you switch that, and now no one can go in or out. And then uh, if you want to go out without, you know, using it, switch it open and you let everybody in. <laughs> um, and then over here, uh, we have a, a futon couch I made. Um, this is a nice little eight inch memory foam from Amazon. It's uh, very comfortable. And then below here I have, you know, it's pretty open for storage. You could put your, put my cooker under there. Um, you could put off-roading gear, food, groceries, anything like that. And then uh, also we have, um, I don't know if you noticed, we have this beautiful floor here. Um, my dad and I installed that. It's just like basic, you know, hardwood floor that you can put in anyone's house. Um, so then over here, um, we have this beautiful wood, um, nice trim we put up. And you know, we need curtains for extra privacy. I do have window tints, but uh, at night when you have the lights on in here, people can still see in. So I do like the little extra privacy when we're hanging out. Um, and then above here, we have these beautiful sheets from Home Depot. Um, it's perfect for do-it-yourself projects. You know, instead of doing all the little boards, they pretty much just bend together. You know, I'm a little tall, but uh, I do fit perfect right here. So this is where I like standing. Cool. Yeah. So uh, normal school buses do come with insulation in them, but uh, I did tear down the ceiling and replace it with um, nice home insulation we get from Home Depot. Um, it wasn't spray foam, it was just the one you place up there. You know, it's pretty thick, it does the job well. Um, you know, once the heat gets up in here, it, it stays pretty well. Back here, we have the skylight here. And uh, right now it's the basic skylight, but um, next week's project is taking it out, framing it, and putting in a, like a skylight, a see-through one that opens up. And then I'm gonna have it open up and have a little ladder come down. And I'm gonna have a nice rooftop deck up there to barbecue and hang out on. Um, and with barbecuing, you know, you have to wash your hands, wash your dishes. Um, so I have this, you know, nice do-it-yourself sink. This is pretty long, so people ask if you ever need a shower or anything like that. I can just open up this window here, and bang, you have an outdoor shower, just like that. So, and this is ran off of, um, I have a water tanks under here. Um, so I have the waste bucket here. This comes right off the thing, right down there. 
and then I do have buckets of water with uh, this hose goes in it and sucks the water out with this is the water pump you can find all this you know right on Amazon it's pretty cheap I think it was like a hundred dollar project to get this running um, this power uh, water pump you just run off you can run it you can hot wire it to your battery or what I usually do is I just use a, a jet ski battery and it powers it just fine with this nice cabinet uh, you need a lot of storage so here I have you know silverware knives pong balls here I have you know your bowls your plates extra little goodies and then the middle drawer here is pretty much for pots and pans um, extra propane tank for my cooker. After off-roading, you might want to have a good night. So I've got a nice little beer funnel here. And if you ever break down, you have to add oil in the truck. Just multi-purpose funnel. And then below here, this one's more of a utility drawer. So over here we have the cooker and it is ran off propane. Um, really cheap to use. So what I usually do is get back from the trail. You want to cook up a burger, cook up some eggs. You just crank these on, you chef it up, open up the window, and uh, it also has a working oven. So you can make cookies, you can, you know, have Thanksgiving in here if you really wanted to. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, it's pretty dandy. Um, up here we have some nice shelving. This is one of the most important parts of the build, just because, you know, you're pretty limited with space. So this is perfect for, you know, chips. Um, sometimes I put clothes up here. Uh, water pots and pans pretty much just extra storage and uh, with that I made it wrap all the way around and we have a, a bed here this is a full-size bed a lot of people ask you know how, what kind of bed do you have in here this is a pretty small space but I fit a full-size bed just fine it's very comfortable and under the here I built the bed um, my Yeti fits right under here so I don't have a fridge or anything this Yeti keeps cold for at least five days when I go out pack it full of food and then under here, I have a whole bunch of open storage. Um, so currently, I just have two chairs in there for hanging out, but I usually keep a, a big folding table in there, um, extra supplies, extra off-road parts. My friends and I love going snowboarding, so we pack all of our snowboarding, all of our skis. We put like six guys in here, and we just go up for the mountain. We snowboard for the day. We come back here, and uh, you know, we chef up some burgers for lunch, and then go back out, shred the gnar, and then come back. And usually if we do a weekend trip, um, we can have someone sleep on the futon here. And then um, two people can sleep on the bed, you know, opposites, of course. <laughs> and then uh, we have a futon, um, I'm sorry, a cot that pulls out. We have a nice cot, like a eight foot cot that fits perfect. So you can fit one, two, three, four. You can fit four people pretty comfortably sleeping in here. Um, so as you see in the back, I have a nice stereo system. A lot of people ask, how do you power them? I actually do have a 3000 watt inverter. I run off another jet ski battery and uh, that gives me plenty of power for a you know, three day vacation weekend trip. And then also with the power inverter, you know, I can run um, your battery for your phone charger, anything like that. All right, so um, going off roading at Rosh Creek, it gets really cold up there. Um, for heat, I usually have a, a buddy heater. I run off the propane. And then for backups, I carry a generator I can use for an electric heater. That gets it really hot in here. Um, so this idea came about, um, my Jeep, I usually drive to Rosh Creek, which is a three hour drive. My Jeep gets seven miles per gallon and this bus here gets nine miles per gallon. So it's actually more affordable for me to drive a bus hauling my Jeep and having a five-star hotel in here. Uh, most people when they go off-roading um, near Ross Creek, they usually get an $80 hotel for a night or they camp outside in the freezing cold. And uh, I said, no, let me just go buy this bus. Um, so the idea came about on Pinterest. I saw someone have a few ATVs on the back and the next day I went on Facebook Marketplace and I purchased this bad boy. Um, so this bus was originally 10 windows and uh, my Jeep's pretty long. Um, so when I first bought the bus, I pulled the Jeep up to the side of it and uh, just took an estimate guess, praying that it would work. And uh, we cut it up and moved the back up. Um, but for the interior, we, uh, that back door used to be all the way in the back of the bus. It used to be a full-size bus. And uh, we cut it up with Sawzall blades, grinder wheels, um, walked it up, put it in place. It's 100% waterproof. It's a really good hauler. So we'll go outside and I'll show you guys around um, the bus and the Jeep. So the bus was, of course, yellow. And then uh, when I bought it, um, the person I bought it from already put a primer on it. Um, so when I got it, I sanded it and I painted it this beautiful olive green. 
Olive Drab Green, and um, this is Sherman Williams DTM direct to metal paint. It's super easy. My friends and I all just hand rolled it, paint brushed it. Um, the black is Rust-Oleum black gloss, so you get the nice high gloss with it. Um, and then, so with the process, this used to be a full size bus. Um, we cut the bus, the back door off around the back, walked it up. And uh, when we did the process, um, we left the overhang on the, the front of the bus, the roof, and we hammered and sludged the back of the bus door underneath and wedge it through so it'd be watertight and then over here you know you have one cut another cut to combine these we got extra sheet metal and screwed them through and then um, on the back of the door underneath here um, we did weld it it's very thin metal so we only be able to weld it in a few spots but that's fully welded um, the lights still work the back door still works um, when moving the back up obviously the you know different height differences so we have to trim off a quarter inch of the door but it is 100% functional. So with the Jeep, this is, uh, my Jeep weighs 6,000 pounds, so it's pretty heavy, um, but nothing a school bus can't handle. These things can handle a lot of weight. Um, so to reinforce the flatbed, um, right above the school bus floor, we put in diamond plate all along, all welded, and then we got this heavy duty angle iron and ran it along the perimeter to give it that extra strength. Um, the wheel wells, we cut down, we flat topped them, and built these with heavy gauge diamond plate. And then when I do load up the Jeep, you never, you don't want to hit the front of course. So we put these little bump stops here. So every time I load the Jeep, it's perfect. It stops right in time. Um, and then with loading the Jeep, I use these max straps. They're rated for like 10,000, 12,000 pounds, hundred percent trustworthy. Um, you just ratchet it down all four. And then of course I have a spare tire um, for the bus. You never know what's going to happen. So I did get a spare tire. The bus has all new tires all around. Some people ask, um, how do you get on with the Jeep? I have these 12 foot aluminum ramps that uh, I put out and load up the Jeep. Um, I usually do it all by myself. Um, I'm, you know, I've done it quite a few times, so I know exactly where to go. Um, so then with this Jeep, it's, uh, you know, as, as I mentioned before, it's a 2016. Um, it's, I use it to go off roading. I'm not scared to, you know, send it a little bit. So I definitely see some pretty gnarly trails. Um, I'll check that out on, uh, if you guys want to see some more off-roading stuff on uh, my Instagram, uh, Rubicon JK, same as here. Um, I post all the time. I, uh, I'm going out west and I love off-roading and the bus life adventure. Um, this Jeep has 43 inch tires on it and um, with 43 inch tires you obviously can't have stock axles on a Jeep. So on the back I have a 14 bolt, it's called one ton, so it's a 14 bolt rear axle. Um, it's four linked on the rear and uh, on the front, it's a 2008 Ford Super Duty axle. Um, and then with that, I have coilovers. These are 14 inch coilovers. They give me maximum articulation on the trail. Um, we cut it into the frame to make them fit. So those were all cut in there. Um, and then also we have B-locks. These are KMC B-locks. With these B-locks, it allows you to air down all, I usually air down to four PSI, so that's pretty low. Um, when you go off-roading, the tire crumbles and all that, but with the B-Lock, it never falls off the ring. So you, I run four PSI on the trails. These tires are amazing. They grip to everything. It's pretty cool. Um, of course, you know, I'm a little, I beat not babied, so uh, got a little damages. You know, I'm not afraid to send it, give it some boo-boos, you know. Um, so up front, I have the coilovers, 12-inch front. And uh, we have a one ton Super Duty front axle. Um, it has a rock crawler long arm kit on it. It has a supercharger on it as well oh, to unload it. So I usually drive to Ross Creek, usually three hours. And then when I get there, I pull up just like this. I hop out. The first thing I do is unstrap the ramps. And then uh, with that, I... And then we made these little grooves here. So my Jeep is pretty wide, so I run it all on the outside. But if I were to tow a buddy's Jeep home, I can move them in for the narrower axles because this has the extra wide axles on it. Um, so I line these up on the edge, make sure they're all straight. And then uh, from there, I go ahead and I unstrap the Jeep.
And then we'll move to the front, unstrap the front. Troy, thank you very much for taking the time today to give us a tour of your schooler conversion. Can you walk our viewers through the process of titling one of these? Yeah, absolutely. Um, thank you for having me on the channel, by the way. And uh, so titling school buses is pretty difficult um, in some states, um, others not. Um, so when you buy the school bus, it comes with a school bus title. And the first thing you have to do is convert that title into a motorhome title. And to do that, you have to take all the stop signs off, the lights off, you have to paint the school bus, cover all the signs. It can't be yellow in New Jersey. And then you also have to strip all the seats out. And to apply for the new title, you have to send photos of your school bus conversion. And you have to make sure there's like a, a sink, a bed, a couch. Um, so you have to send those photos in. And on top of that, you also have to get the school bus weighed on a certified CAT scale. Um, so when I bought this bus, the first thing I did was uh, strip the seats. I threw in, you know, a cheap little sink. Um, I, I jury rigged it, make it look like it was half converted. Um, so I had all the requir requirements. I had a refrigerator, a couch in there, and then I got it towed to the cat scale. Um, I got it weighed, and then as soon as I got home, um, I applied for it and I um, mailed it in to DMV. And uh, once you mail it in, it took me like. Three, three to four months to hear back from them. Um, so it was a lot of waiting. Um, so my advice for anyone out there that's doing it is uh, convert it as soon as possible, but you don't have to do the whole nine yards, just do it like, you know, make it look half all right to get the requirements so you can get ahead of schedule if you have to drive it per se. Um, so that's the titling process. And then finding insurance is pretty difficult. Um, when you find insurance, you can't mention school bus. Anytime you mention school bus to an insurance company, they're like, oh, nope. So uh, we have to do is say a bus. You say, cause this is a 2001 Thomas Freightliner. So I say, hey, I like to, you know, insure my 2001 Thomas Freightliner RV. So after you get the new um, title that says motorhome on it, um, when you apply for insurance, you have to say RV and don't say ever, don't ever say school bus. Cause it's not a school bus anymore. It's an RV. Um, so then once you get insurance, uh, I have it through Progressive and it's extremely affordable. Uh, RV insurance um, ranges from anywhere from like 400 to 1000 depending where you're from. Um, I was lucky enough to get it for $400 a year. Um, so you can't beat that at all. Um, you know, 3000 miles, you know, something like that. But uh, it's pretty cool. Um, yes, that's pretty much the titling and insurance part of it. Um, now, because of the conversion, you don't need a CDL anymore? Correct. Um, so you do not need a CDL. Um, as long as it says RV, anyone could drive an RV. Um, and it, this also has air brakes. Um, so some states require if you have air brakes, you need a CDL. Um, but I looked into it and they said I was able to um, just because it was an RV. So I do not have a CDL or a special license. Can you help our viewers when they have questions with budget on something yeah, like this? Absolutely. Um, so this is a budget build. Um, I used a lot of reusable cabinets. Like these are my dad's old cabinets from his kitchen before he redone it, redid it. Um, so I use these. But anywhere from budgeting, you can find school buses from... Uh, if you buy them in auctions, you can get them as cheap as a $1,000, um, but those are really hard. You kind of buy those uh, sight unseen, so I don't really, I personally don't like that idea. I personally like buying them from someone that you know, school bus companies. Um, so a budget is, I would say, budget between $3,000 and $8,000 to buy a bus. Um, especially nowadays, a lot of prices have gone up. Um, so you can just look, I say your best advice is go on Facebook Marketplace and type in school bus. Um, and you can get an idea yourself, um, but I'd say three to $8,000 to purchase the bus. And then on top of the total build to make this hauler, um, I mean, you can go anywhere from, you know, putting $5,000 into it. You could do, you know, anything pretty much. Um, but I would say the overall total with buying a school bus and the conversion, I'd probably say for people, um, 
I'll probably say, you know, like 10,000 to 50,000, you can make it pretty much. I mean, you can go all out, all the gadgets, but uh, my future um, is solar panels and a rooftop deck and maybe a little shower, um, but that will obviously increase the build portion. Um, so right now, you know, it's pretty much, it's a budget build. Um, Home Depot, these sheets are $25 each. Um, so, you know, a couple, you know, hundred dollars in sheets. Um, this cooker is $250. That's definitely the best investment right there is that cooker. So that's $250. You know, this is just, you know, two by fours. You can go to Home Depot, spend a couple hundred bucks on two by fours. The bed's two by fours. So pretty much do it yourself. Um, you know, it's a pretty cool process. process. Um, I learned a lot how to do it. Um, pretty much YouTube is great. Just type in do it yourself, how to make a bench, how to make a bed. Um, so it's pretty much a lot of budget building. Um, a lot of good resources are um, do it yourself van conversions. That's how I learned about my sink. Um, so that there's a big article on it, how to do that. You buy the water pump, you buy the faucet, two gray water, you know, different tanks and all. But uh, for the most part, you know, don't be afraid to do it. Um, it's, you know, do a little here and there. That's all that matters. So I know you mentioned it before, but how are viewers going to be able to follow you and yeah. see the build process for this, absolutely. your future builds, and yeah. as well as, I think you have a YouTube channel with some yeah. of it on there? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so my YouTube channel is RubiconJK, my Instagram is RubiconJK, and also I have TikTok, RubiconJK, and on those three channels, I uh, post a whole bunch about my school bus, my journeys, my off-road adventures. Um, I have a lot of videos of me personally cutting the bus. Um, I have videos of me converting the bus, so feel free to go check that out. Instagram RubiconJK. Um, it's you know, if you have any questions, feel free to DM me. I'm very nice. I'll answer anyone, um, and I have a lot of you know how to do it yourself. Um, TikTok's pretty cool. I have a few 60 like 60 second clips of the whole process from cutting the bus, from painting the bus, from converting it. So it's pretty cool. Check it out on there. And uh, if you're ever in the area or anything like that, feel free to message me. I'm you know, pretty friendly. I'm down to meet up and show you the rig. Well, this is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please like cool. this video, comment, share, and subscribe. Awesome. We love it, and we'll see you soon. Thank you, guys. Thanks for having me.